You called out Rick Scott a little while ago in your remarks. Earlier today, anticipating your remarks, he said, and I'm just quoting here, that uh, the best thing, the most effective thing Joe Biden can do to solve the inflation crisis he created is resign. He's the problem. The senator, added later, idea. the senator added later, Joe Biden is unwell, he's unfit for office, he's incoherent, incapacitated, and confused. These are his words. Offering you a chance to respond. I think the man has a problem. Well, that was President Biden's short and sweet response to remarks from Senator Rick Scott of Florida after the White House criticized the senator's economic plan that would increase taxes on millions of Americans. Scott's proposal includes a provision that would require all Americans to pay at least some federal income tax. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Jake Auchincloss of Massachusetts. He's vice chair of the Financial Services Committee and a member of the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure. Good morning, Congressman. Uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, let's start there domestically. President Biden has made no secret that they've wanted to sharpen their attacks on Republicans. We want to get you to weigh in as to whether you think that's effective. But he's also the commander in chief, the president of the United States, at a moment when inflation is high and there's only so much he can do. It's a global issue. A lot of supply chain woes are things that are out of his control. How does he and your party, the Democrats, manage this? Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Uh, we need real solutions right now, not personal sniping and certainly not personal attacks against the president of the United States. Addressing inflation, as you said, requires addressing the drivers of inflation. There's been a two year pandemic that has shut down the nation's biggest supplier in China. And we have a war of uh, one of the world's biggest oil exporters against one of the world's biggest wheat exporters. The president is managing both the pandemic and the war. Uh, extremely, uh, extremely capably. And addressing those drivers of inflation is ultimately how we are going to get control of costs in, uh, in pairing with the Federal Reserve's tightening of, of interest rates. So let's turn now overseas in the war in Ukraine. You recently co-authored an op-ed in the Washington Post with Republican Representative Liz Cheney. You both urged the U.S. to continue providing military aid to Ukraine arguing that the former Soviet country is fighting for freedom uh, for themselves as well as for the United States. Elaborate on that, and if you will, weigh in on this new expanded aid package that the House wants to get approved. Representative Cheney and I disagree on plenty, including, of course, reproductive rights. But politics stops at the water's edge. Vladimir Putin, for years, has tried to divide and demoralize the American body politic. It's not going to work. There is strong bipartisan support for a U.S. objective of a free, democratic, and sovereign Ukraine. Vladimir Putin needs to fail, and he needs to know that the United States is committed for the long haul to see uh, Ukrainian forces victorious and his forces retreat in defeat. So, Congressman, you just mentioned it that you and the Congresswoman from Wyoming disagree on reproductive rights. So let's go. Let's go there next. Uh, there's a vote in the Senate coming expected to fail. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure you hear from frustrated constituents, worried constituents uh, about what's the future of abortion rights in this country. What are you telling them? What are you saying they should do right now? Should they be protesting? Should they be mobilizing? What should they do uh, with the future of uh, Roe v. Wade so very much in doubt? Yes, it's going to fail. Uh, reason number 700 why we've got to abolish the filibuster. Uh, and in the short term, we need to be working with organizations like Planned Parenthood to provide interstate services to women in reproductive health care deserts, to provide mail order medication, to provide uh, medical services to women who don't have access to them. But in the medium term, when the people's institutions fail to deliver uh, on fundamental rights, it's time to take the issue back to voters. And we have got to campaign on this in the midterms to appeal to independent voters, particularly women independent voters, to say for the first time in living memory, the Supreme Court is rolling back a fundamental right. It's going to affect uh, you personally. And we've got to bring this issue to the ballot box. All right. Congressman Jay Gockenkloss, uh, we appreciate it. And we'll speak to you again soon. Thanks for being here this morning. Up next, is diplomacy between Russia and the West still possible? Richard Haas weighs in. And coming up on Morning Joe, the latest from the ground in Ukraine, as the Kremlin claims its forces have made significant gains in the eastern part of the country. And U.S. intelligence is pointing to a prolonged conflict in Eastern Europe. 
We'll get expert military analysis from retired U.S. Army General Steph Twitty and Peter Zwack. Also ahead, new polling on where voters stand on the abortion debate following the leak of that Supreme Court draft opinion on Roe v. Wade. Plus, more on what the results of yesterday's Republican primaries say about Donald Trump's influence on the midterms. Morning Joe, just a few moments away.